Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Armagan and welcome to Pulsifer's first ever reaction, reaction video. So, I have recently Photoshop 2021 download here. Or I think this is the game changer, bros and gals. So, reaction video is like a lot of things. मैं तो देखा क्या उसको स्टार्ट कर रहा था तो सोचा रिएक्शन फर्स्ट एवर रिएक्शन वीडियो बनाते हैं और अभी मैंने उसको देखा नहीं है तो 2021 की मैंने देखना भी है फोटोशॉप को तो उसको देखते हैं फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द ट्यूटोरियल इज नॉट माइन सो क्रेडिट टू द आर्टिस्ट लेट्स डाइव इनटू इट विदाउट एनी फर्दर ब्रेक्स ओके वेयर इज स्क्रीन शेयर स्क्रीन शेयर 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 यस शेयर साउंड All right, open up Photoshop and then go to file open. We're going to be working with the file calls. One thing I forgot to mention, I cannot watch tutorials at normal speeds, so try to catch up. Guy replacement 01. You'll notice that a few of the files have these names afterwards. That's because Samuel Ferreira decided to share his uh, image with the world under a Creative Commons license, means we get to use it without having to pay for it and without a watermark. So thank you, Samuel. Dan, Ethan, Tobias. You'll see a few of those through the course. All right, and the first thing we need to do, just make sure everyone's looks like mine in terms of the workspace. Go to window, go to workspace, click on essentials. Okay, then come back in here and go to reset essentials just so that yours looks like mine. And now we're going to look at the very best, most exciting, according to Dan, 2021 Photoshop feature, and it is under edit, and it is this one, sky replacement. Yes way. Click it. Kick back. Relax. Watch the sky. Watch it. Oh, it just removed it. Look at the mask. So good. Turn the preview on and off. It will depend on, this remembers the last sky you've picked. So on the top here, it says sky. Drop that down. Okay, and you can work your way through. There's a bunch of preset ones. So blue skies, you can click on any of these and watch. Watching. Oh, good, huh? There was all sorts of amazing ones in there. Spectacular. Let's go for this. Spectacular. <laughs> They've got to suit your image. Uh, one thing you... Wind mm, down, bros. To note there's that you can click on these and actually drag them here. So if they're not quite lining up, you can move them around. Okay, so that's going to be good for my one. Oh, look at that. So good. Let's click OK. And I want you to notice the layers over here. It's pretty non-destructive. You can turn that group off and it's all back to normal. Okay, but there's all this kind of non-destructive masks, the background's there, lots of things you can mess around with afterwards. Let's have a look at the second version. File open and go to Sky Replacement 02, Dan Freeman. This is uh, Auckland Harbour in New Zealand. You'll notice a lot of kind of New Zealandy pictures because that's where I'm from. But let's look at taking the Sky Replacement in a little bit more detail. Let's go to Edit, Content, nope, let's go to Sky Replacement. And be amazed, watch that sky. Oh, it is good. Uh, let's have a little look. Let's pick one of the sunset ones because I want to show you something. Pick anything you like. Move it around as you wish. Okay. But I want to show you this um, kind of foreground adjustments that's happening here. If I click OK, Are you'll you notice here we get our kind of like layer built up. But these two bottom ones here are actually doing a pretty amazing job. The background, if it was just cut out, would look okay but unrealistic. It's these foreground colors. So you turn them on, turn them off. They're actually taking the color from the background, in our case, from the sunsets, and it's actually influencing this foreground. Okay, so it's actually kind of, see, it's actually changing our foreground image to make it believable. The kind of stuff that we'd have to do as professionals to try and get it to blend, but they're doing that automatically for us. And again, there is adjustments. Okay, so there is lots of masks. You can actually click on here, this little icon there. Okay, and actually work through the curves that they've adjusted. Okay, you can kind of fine tune as you like, but it's pretty good out of the box for me. Let's open up uh, the third one, file open. Let's go to Star Replacement 03. Now I'm showing you this one because it doesn't work very well, or at least it needs a little bit of modification. Yes, afterwards. Sometimes I see these tutorials online and they show me the only ones that work perfectly, but I want to share with you what you can do. It's quite well. this kind of like overexposed uh, sunset mm -hmm. over here. Let's click Sky Replacement. Still does a pretty good job. I lift it up, try and match it up. You can okay. see what's happening kind of over here. Okay. So to get around that, you can play around with shift edge and fade edge. Okay, if it's a consistent background, it's not going to work for us. I'm going to click OK. But because Photoshop was clever enough to give us all these kind of layers that we can work with, see this guy here, you can kind of see in the thumbnail it dips down into yeah, this too far. What I want to do is work on the mask, okay, and grab my brush tool. So this one here, or B but on your keyboard. Okay, and it's in it's terms of the color, just, I want to make yeah. sure my foreground color is black. Okay, so over here, if it's white at the front, click on this little arrow here. And in terms of brush sizes, a little handy trick for you is I'm going to scale it up. You can use your square brackets, it's up to you. Um, but what I want to do is if you're on a Mac, hold down Control and Option on your keyboard, okay, both of those down, and then click, hold the mouse down, left and right is the size, and up and down is hardness. That's a sweet trick. Okay, if you're on a PC, you hold down the Alt key, okay, and you use your right click, weirdly. Click your right click down, hold it down, and move left and right, up and down. I've got something about that sort of size. Black's my foreground color, and I'm just setting the opacity to about 50. Another little trick is on your keyboard, tap 2. Can you see it changed the opacity to um, 20? 5. So these are the numbers that are just above your letters. Okay, click on those. 0 is 100%. 7. Okay, I'm going to go down to about 50, and then just kind of brush this out. Goes back and forth, trying to match the rest of it. I might actually creep up into this area here. Go a bit bigger. Do the same on the foreground lighting color. Just to try and bring that back in. 
there's never going to be perfect on everything, but hopefully we'll give you some tools to uh, make it extend through some of the more challenging uh, backgrounds. Let's open number four. Much like this one here, Sky Replacement 04. Click open. I want to show you a couple more things you can do. So edit, Sky Replacement. Let's have a little look. Pick something different this time. Oh, that's cool. Oh, sorry, some mountains. <laughs> Double mountains. All right. So what you can do is shift edge. Okay, it's going to play with around the, with the connection between the foreground and um, background kind of new sky here. So you can play around with shift edge, kind of get more of the background or the original image in. Good job. Like for a nice bit. You move the image in or hold off for me to Good. And actually, before we move on, I want to get you to do some homework. Think of it as fun practice. So I want you to find a photograph of your town, your village, your city, your state, your country, whatever it is, and I want you to send me a before and after. You can find images from Adobe Stock if you have a license for that, unsplash, or share it with me. Bring your own laptop. Uh, and an, an addition to Sky Replacement. Sky Replacement is pretty, like, abrupt. Maybe that's not the word. But it just kind of replaces the sky. Maybe what we want to do is just enhance the sky, adjust it. So what they've done is they've given us a cool feature. So to file open. Let's go to one called Sky Select Hi, 01. Okay, open this one up. And let's say we don't want to replace right, the yeah. sky, but we do want to, like, adjust it. That's this handy selection. Click on that. That's a pretty amazing job. Look at that. I tested it on a bunch of different images, and it works really well. What are we going to do with that selection? We can go to adjustments and we can say, I'm going to use this last one here called vibrance. Okay, I'm going to you know, increase the vibrance or saturation. It's up to you what you want to do. Given that selection, we can use curves, you know, levels, whatever you want to do. It's probably a bit extreme. Anyway, so you can see down here, because we had a selection, it's a layer mask, it's all very non-destructive. On, off, on, off. And we can use that exact same technique to do the inverse as well. Okay, we can go to select sky. Let's say we want to mess around with the foreground. Okay, so we've got the sky selected. What we can do is we can go to select, go to inverse, and look, we've got the foreground selected. Come on, we'll do the same thing. Let's go to adjustments. Let's click on, let's use curves. Okay, and do what you want. Okay, so, oh, am I making mine better or worse? Everybody's yelling at home, worse. Okay, I don't know. I like to sky replacements. Yeah, yeah it's right, so, foreground. Easy card, yeah, come. Sky. Or with yeah. the new fancy sky select. Yeah. Right, next new feature. All right, so I want to close all these down. You can save yours. I'm not going to save mine. Uh, file a handy trick for people that don't know. You close all. You're like, can it be that handy? Close feature. all means you can do this. Apply all, don't save, or click save. Up to you. I'm going to don't save them all. Goodbye, people. And they all go once. Has everybody done the file close, don't save, file close, don't save, file close, don't save. Anyway, uh, let's look at the next one. It's called content aware trace. Now, for this. I don't know if you caught that or not, but let me repeat it for you. Photoshop. When you open a lot of tabs, you can cross the Photoshop and cross the Photoshop. So, if you ask a lot of questions, you can ask a lot of Do you want to save it or not? Close, 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 close. Now, it's not that it's not that it's direct. I mean, you can close all the tabs at once. Don't show again. It's not that 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 it's not to work depending on when you're watching this it's in something called the technology previews it means that you can turn it on if you want to use it i think you should because it's cool but it's maybe not ready for the big time yet just yet so if you go to on a mac photoshop preferences and go to technology previews okay if you're on a pc go to edit and left preferences down the bottom and find technology previews yours might be on by default if you can't see it in here you can see my one it says enable content aware tracing tool turn that on if you can see it if it's not there it's probably just on by default now because you're in the future and i've just turned it on it's no longer a secret thing you need to turn on so make sure it's on and go to file open Let's go to the one called Content Aware 01. Jude Beck. Now, who is this good for? It's for people who use the. Well, it's not hidden. See, Content Aware Tracing Tool. It's mixed in with the pen tool. So click, hold, hold, hold on this for a little while. Go to Content Aware Tracing Tool. And up here, I've picked. You might be using a path. Depends on how you're using this. I'm going to build a shape so you can see it on the video easily. I'm going to have a fill with no fill. And I'm going to have a stroke that is bright green and it's 10 pixels just so that you can see what I'm doing. And what we're going to do is already. If if I hover above it, um, I know Jason and Taylor, the editors, will zoom in so you can see, but there's this like teeny dotted line around the outside. Okay, what you can do is, oh, look at this, ready? Click once. It drew a line around the outside. Look how good it is. I'm good with the pen tool, but I'm definitely not. Boom. Content aware tool, content aware trace goes. This is next level shit. That quick or that good. Okay, and what you can do is, instead of like, what you want to do is say, I want to add to it. Okay, okay so you to switch to the next tool. And what. Uh, Let's rewind that. Having a stroke that is bright green and it's 10 pixels on tracing tool. See, to kind of either cut things out or make vectors. It's best to kind of just show you what it does. So it is hidden. Well, it's not hidden. See, content aware tracing tool. It's mixed in with the pen tool. So click, hold, hold, hold on this for a little while. Go to content aware tracing tool. And up here, I've picked, you might be using a path. It depends on how you're using this. I'm going to build a shape so you can see it on the video easily. I'm going to have a fill with no fill. And I'm going to have a stroke that is bright green and it's 10 pixels just so that you can see what I'm doing. 
And what we're going to do is already, if I hover above it, um, I know Jason and Taylor, the editors, will zoom in so you can see, but there's this like teeny dotted line around the outside. Okay, what you can do is, oh, look at this, ready? Click once. It drew a line around the outside. Look how good it is. I'm good with the pen tool, but I'm definitely not that quick or that good. Okay, and what you can do is instead of like, what you want to do is say, I want to add to it. Okay, okay so you're going to switch to the next tool. And what it'll do is it'll say, oh, do you want to join it with this one? And then join this one and back to this one. Oh, back to that one even. Oh, look at that. Look what it did. So good with the pen tool. Even if you are good with the pen tool and you enjoy a good going around the outside and adjusting curves what? and handles, you've got to be a little bit time at least. Let's look at another option because that one was actually, I found an option that was, was on a nice clear background. Okay, if you're doing product photography, you can make those kind of like simple backgrounds happen to make your uh, cutting out easy. Okay, but let's look at something slightly more complicated. Let's go to file open. Let's go to content aware 02. This one here has a few like uh, compound shapes. Okay, so we're going to use the same tool. Okay, and we are going to do, we're going to turn this on, auto trim. I found it's off by default, but it might not be off on default, depending on what Photoshop decided to do in the kind of final versions. But this thing here I find, just turn it on, leave it on. Because what it will do is, watch this. So I'm gonna zoom in here. Can you see this kind of first shape? If I click on here, great. Then I go to this, then I go to this. Can you see it's going in, it's following that curve in there? Okay, it's being too clever for its own self. And you click on that and you're like, oh no, what do I do? If you go over here, you can kind of see with the power of zooming in, can you see that line? Watch that line there. You see there's like a little squiggle through it, a little red line going doo -doo -doo -doo. I don't even know it's red, it's tiny. Um, but it means, that's that auto trim feature. It means like, oh, you're going this way, I'm gonna delete all that stuff. So you can go around, make sure auto trim's on, and just make sure it'll double back and delete anything. Now remember, I'm on this plus, so I'm adding to it every single time. And that's what I'm on by default. Now you can see across here, it's given up. It's like, well, oh, there's not enough contrast. It doesn't know what to do. So what you can do, this is where this detail option is. Set to 1%. Watch this, I click, hold it, hold it, hold it with your mouse, I click it down, and then drag it to the right. Can you start to see all those lines appearing? Okay, if you go too far, it's gonna try and draw every single tonal change there. So you wanna find on your image, we have a happy medium of like most of it is visible. Can okay, you see all those blue lines appearing? Okay, so I went somewhere in there. Okay, so that it gives it a bit more, it's just being a bit more detailed with its look. Okay, you can see there now it's got that piece. So you might have to turn it up and down as you go around depending on like how detailed yeah. it is. Okay, you mine's doing it amazingly. Oh, look, it just did all that. Now I'm gonna be honest, this, you know, it works amazingly well with this high contrast back and forth images. Things are all, you know, you're trying to pick hair out of hay, it's not gonna work. Okay, so it needs to have, a, at this stage at least, and it's kind of like, I don't know, pre-release version, it needs the, uh, you know, really high, simple contrast. Another thing I wanna show you is, and um, we've been hitting plus to keep adding to it. Actually, I wanna finish, it depends on what you wanna do. I don't have to finish this off, but I wanna get close to here to make it a complete solid, because then I could go through and fill it if I wanted to. It's not what I wanna do just to prove that you can. And what I want is these shapes in here, I need to cut these out as well. So I wanna go back to this first tool and that'll just mean that I, it'll think that I am creating a new shape, which is what I wanna do. Okay, I don't want it to try and join up with the old one. Okay, I'm gonna go in here, draw that one. Okay, so now it's started another shape. I have to go back to the plus, otherwise it'll keep creating new shapes. So you, it's, um, yeah, that's something you have to do. I have to kind of wheel around a bit to find it. Come on, zoom in a bit. That'll do, that'll do. Ooh, I'm gonna have to fix that with the pen tool because it is very blurry. <laughs> I don't blame you Photoshop, that's a tough one. Any other ones? So I should do the same thing in here. Oh, that was a one click, woohoo. All right, let me show you the next one how to tidy some of this stuff up. But you can see here, three separate shapes. I could be copying and pasting these into Illustrator, XD. Okay, I could be using the paths, okay, for doing masks. Amazing new feature for those people who use pen tool in Photoshop. Let's open up the third one, Content Aware 3. So this one, what you need to remember is that the detail is set to whatever it was in the, the last time you used it. So probably, you know, like mine got up quite high. I'm gonna go back down to 1% to see how well it does and I'm gonna just give it a go. I often go as low as you can and raise it up if you need to. I leave auto trim on. I often just start with plus and leave it on plus and I'm gonna just work my way around. And whoa, look at that. Nice, anyway, excited. Uh, let's click on one. Let's click on this one here. So it didn't quite grab in there. So I kind of need that. Oh, no, there it was, okay. Now this is a, a lot trickier one, so there's gonna be a few problems in here. Let's have a little look uh, down here. Still pretty good. Like there's gonna be tidy up regardless. Those first ones I gave you were really exciting and I made sure they were pretty good for the demo to get everyone hyped up and excited, but there is gonna be tidy up to be done. So things like this, you know, it's easy enough to go through and go to the pen tool and the direct selection tool. Okay, these are the two that you'll use. Okay, you can go in here and P for pen tool, and that one there, I do not need you. So I don't have to hold anything down, turn it off. Same with that one, don't need you. Okay, but that one there didn't quite work. So I'm gonna grab my direct selection tool, drag it up this way. I'd argue that's a pretty amazing starting point for this particular one. Depends on how fast you are with the pen tool. Anyway, that is Content Aware Trace Tool under technology previews for the moment, but if you're watching this in the long future, it's probably just a tool in there ready to go. All right, next feature. I'm gonna do my file, close all, click, don't save, and then go to file open. And I want you to go to Daniel Walter Scott 01. And it's me, hello me, I'm very neutral. <laughs> I'm normally smiling, that's not my natural face. Uh, but I had to be for this uh, particular new feature. Let's check it out. Called filter, neural filters. Okay, these are scary, scary good. Let's click on them. 
Click OK. It's using things like, they call it Adobe Sensei. Think machine learning, artificial intelligence stuff. Now, yours will look different from mine, probably. I've got a pre-release version. Um, you've got this kind of like featured filters, which only has a couple. These are the ones that Adobe say, these are ready and are pretty good. These ones down here, which we'll look at in the beta filters, are all things that are really good, but they're getting out early to us to have a look through. Okay, but there are some artifacts and some small issues with them. But as they get better, they'll be moving into here. So you might have to look between these two to find the ones. The one I'm gonna turn on first is skin smoothing. Click on that one. Oh, look at that. Now this little option down the bottom is preview on, off. On, yeah. off. Look at me, like it's 10 years in, younger. Yeah. I look very soft. <laughs> so you can play around with the smoothness and how blurry it is, okay, to get something that works with your model, okay? Uh, the model might not be as, as handsome as this model is, okay? So you might have to crank up blur and smoothness, but for me, I want, because maybe because I know myself, I, I know that there's a nice version of me, uh, but you can crank it up as well and go full on. Nice. All right, so I'm gonna turn skin smoothing off, and let's have a look at probably the first feature that I raced in to go and find under beta filters, turn on smart portrait, you might have to download some stuff for this. There might be a button here that says download. And then you went straight down here. You went hair thickness, give me lots of it. And then kick back, relax, and watch it up here. It's actually doing the work in the cloud. And come on, I'll speed it up. <laughs> I was hoping more here, more like, I don't know. <laughs> preview on, preview off. It's pretty realistic though. It's actually gone back, so say probably about 10 years. Uh, and let's go, let's go maximum here. <laughs> Now you can see up here, it does things where it, pro oh, look at that. That's me with lots of more hair. It's pretty good. It's giving me more like here on my sideburns as well. Okay, so this is in beta. So there are, um, you know, there are some glitches to it, but it's pretty yeah. amazing, huh? And again, it processes a lot of it in the cloud, so that's getting faster and faster. Mine didn't take that long at all, but you might have to wait. If you've got a really bad internet connection, it might take a little while for the Adobe servers to process what you're doing. But um, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> let's turn hair thickness off. I won't go through all of them. I'll go through the ones that I thought were interesting. Let's go to be happy and crank that up. That's why I've got a neutral face there. Look at that. Preview on, preview off. Holy smokes, it's kind of me smiling. Somehow I've got nicer teeth than I normally do. I've got pretty, pretty bad teeth. Anyway, so have a look through those. They are getting better. I know that there's another release coming in the days, which are going to fix the teeth to be a little less artificial. <laughs> okay, uh, facial age is probably the one. This is the biggest one. This is the one that like, it's pretty, look, it's me when I'm old. It totally is. It's going to be me when I'm older. On, off, on, off. Let's go the other way around. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to spend too long on this. Do I look younger? Kind of do. Okay, it is a up. Let's go for gaze. This one here kind of. Like, I don't know, did it freak me out or did I it get me excited by it? Oh, to watch this. Look to the right. Oh, I looked to the right. <laughs> now I want to go through and just kind of play with them all and have you along for the ride, but we'll, we'll move along. The things I want to show you though is this little blue dot here. Um, it shows you what filters you've applied. So you can actually go through and you know, apply more than one at a time. Okay, and this will tell you the ones you've got applied. Let's make sure your hair thickness is cranked up again. And then we'll click excited. Let's go for gaze. This one here kind of like, I don't know. Did it freak me out or did it get me excited by technology? Watch this. Look to the right. Oh, I looked to the right. <laughs> okay. Now, I want to go through and just kind of Many play steps. with them all and have you along for the ride, but we'll, we'll move along. The things I want to I show you, though, is this process. little blue dot here. Um, it shows you what filters you've actually applied. So you can actually go through and, you know, apply more than one at a time. Okay. And this will tell you the ones you've got applied. Let's make sure my hair thickness is cranked up again. And then we'll click. <laughs> Uh, one thing I want you to look at down here is where to output it to. Uh, sometimes you want to output it to a new layer. Okay, it could be a smart filter, duplicate layer. Just know oh, that that option is nice. down here. I'm going to just put mine on a duplicate layer. Yeah, just nice. Okay. And I think the gaze, it's done something with my eyes because I did my original image right. I'm using a ring light. Okay, and you can kind of see that ring light in here. It's kind of done a little bit weird there. <laughs> it's totally me with more here. This is really cool. All right, so let's move on. Actually, what I've done for you is I've found you, well, I haven't found you some models. I've given you more versions of me to mess around with in your exercise files. You have permission to make me old, mess around. Okay, there's just a couple of other images you can play around with. Be respectful, but I'm I'm totally happy and not offended and can take a joke, but just be respectful in terms of, I don't know, controversial topics. Get me out of those. Those are there for you to play around with. And I'd really like to see what you do. Like, again, I am not, I want I want to see some ridiculousness I or subtlety up to you. I have a play around with those other versions. Like before, send me what you do. Bring but you like good. Let's have a look at one. Uh, one of the other neural filters. So let's go to file. No, let's go to filter. And let's go to neural filters. There's a few like good things in here. So it's worth spending a little bit of time in here to show you the best ones that I think. Let's go to this one here. Let's go to makeup transfer. Actually, this is not a good one. This is just funny and it only takes a second. So turn it on. Find your reference image. I've given you one in your files. Okay, called makeup transfer two. Okay, open that one and give it a second. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is That's handsome. Nice. Okay, so you nice. can make makeup from nice. one Bro. photograph. Okay, you can see here to another one. Oh, Again, I'd love for you to go through, find your own images. Yeah, okay, and you can use me as the model, okay, and put on different makeup. All right, let's click OK. <laughs> and I want to show you some of the other more practical ones. Oh, look at the layers. It's left that there. <laughs> so you can do some other blending later on. Probably not the best image my screwed up face there. But anyway, it worked it out. Let's look at another it's actually practically cool. useful neural filter. Let's go to one called Instagram. Style Transfer. So Style Transfer. 
Style transfer. Yes, <laughs> okay. so style okay. transfer is in here as well. So filter. Makeup can make filters. Let's here. go to it's actually the feature section. Style transfer. Turn the logic on. Turn the logic on. Turn the logic on. Might have to download some stuff. It might take a while. And look at that. It matches the style over here. And you can just kind of work your way through. And it does a pretty amazing job at kind of matching some of these styles over here. Some of them good. Some of them bad. Look at that one. That's really good. Click show more. Okay, you can kind of just click your way through. Your image. Uh, let's do some Van Gogh. It's pretty cool. You can, down the bottom here, do a couple yeah. of things. Probably the one thing that I yeah, do yeah. about it is preserve color. So it actually preserves the original color and just picks like the texture from it. Oh, you got that, okay. um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Let's have a look at another one. Let's click cancel on that one. So file open. Let's look at one of the earlier images. It's called Sky Replacement. Where is it? Sky Replacement. We'll do Sky Replacement 01. Okay, and go to the same thing. Filter it works really amazing with um, landscapes. Style transfer, click it on. Oh. Try a few of them. Oh man, I loved that combination of that image there. That's uh, 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 Neil's Beach, see, kind of just west of Auckland. Um, yeah. And look at that, so I good. See, yeah. Some of them average, some are really good. Works really good with kind of natural images. Yeah, I want love. Wow, look at that, connection to that and that. Transfer okay, uh, yeah, you can play around with style what? strength and brush size and all sorts of other things Great. afterwards, but style transfer, pretty cool way of, I don't know, yeah, I've nice. used it a bit for nice. making nice. images just look old. I found one that works, you know, nice. I kind of I uh, like preserve it. the color and I was playing around with some of these ones nice. to kind of make it look vintage. Okay, kind Charlie, of a cool Charlie, pinkly Charlie. textury thing going on. There was another one that I liked. Which one was it? Yeah, anyway. Right. So that's style transfer. I click OK, and I'm going to look at opening up the next image. So open. Okay. This one's called Colorize 01. Open that one up. So this new feature is tied up in the neural filters again, okay, but they should all be separate. No, they shouldn't, but I want to identify them as like different use cases. Okay, so coloring black and white images, you can do some amazing work under filter, uh, under neural filters again. Jump down to beta and click on this Colorize and just wait for a second. Look at that. I didn't do anything. Somehow, Adobe Sensei went, that's grass. Those are people. <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing. Oh, black and white. You can play around with things afterwards, but oh. man, for that first one, it did it. Oh, okay, okay. Let's have a look at another oh, file open. Let's go to oh, no. okay. okay. Let's look at something that's maybe a little bit more, not problematic, but I'll show you. Monochromatic you know, picture. Filter, 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 filter. Go to beta. Or again, yours might be under this feature. I like it. I'm not sure what the problems are with it, that it's still in beta. Wow. Look at that. And one thing you might do is you might go, oh, I like that, but I need to, you know, I need a, I want a bit different color over here. Mm. Okay, so what you can do is it's a little strange to use. Okay, so you click in here, and you say, actually no, you, yeah, you click in here and you pick a color. They need to be very neutral. If I want green, okay, green for the grass. I can't go in, I want a yellowy green. Okay, I can't go and use this. Go way, way, way down here, okay. Uh, and I'm just clicking and dragging it here to get a kind of color, click okay. And then what you do is you click once on the thumbnail here. And can you see, it changed it over here. Look at that. You can add more than one color. Let's say that you want to make the, say the C here. Click it first, then go and change the color. You can kind of see it select, it's got a blue ring around it. I don't want a green C, I want like a turquoise kind of. Gotcha. No, control, control. Now remember, subtle colors yeah. tend to work better. But that is pretty amazing. Let's click OK. Now, if you've downloaded the exercise files, I've given you a couple more you can play around with. Uh, 03 and 04. Have a play with those, they're pretty amazing. And yes, but then the pictures. I'm going to leave the neural filters there for the moment. There are other ones to go play around with. Okay, so under beta filters, there's a few other ones that Super Zoom zooms in and makes tools to clean it up. Uh, there's just ones that I haven't been able to find a good use for. Okay, and some of the ones down here are teasers. Okay, if you click on uh, Dustin Scratch, you're like, oh, Okay. At the moment, what they're doing is they are deciding that which one do we make first for our happy Photoshop users? And you click on this one and you tell them why you're interested. They'll start building the ones that people are most interested in first. It's a pretty cool way of doing it. Um, so have a look through these face to character. <laughs> anyway, so have a look through them. And again, maybe this will move around. As become a bit more kind of finished. So let's hit cancel. And let's move. Right, I'm going to file close all. All right, let's open up file open. Let's go to one. And actually, quickly before we go on and show you this tool, uh, if you're enjoying the video, even just a teeny tiny bit, uh, could you like the video? And also, I do stuff like this all the time, so consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. And let me play you this real quick. What you're seeing here uh, in front of you are the things that you create in my Photoshop. Come join in XD. I just want to show you, we're going to do four different um, selections here. A couple of them are from older updates for Photoshop that not a lot of people know about, and some of them are the newest features. So probably the biggest one from last year was this. So Let's double click the word background because it doesn't work if it's called background and locked. Call it a name. I'm going to call mine mm, Hummingbird. <laughs> Funny enough. And in your properties panel, I'm going to double click color just to close it down so we've got a bit more space. And you can see this one. Look at him. So as long as background's gone, the word background at least, click on this, remove background. Look at that. I love the feature. You can see down here, it's added a layer mask and removed it. And I'm going to go into my libraries. I'm going to create a new library for us now. So this is going to be Photoshop 2021 release. And I'm going to grab my move tool. And I'm going to click hold and drag my little hummingbird in. Cool, so that's one of them. Let's, let's open up a couple of other files, file open. Now, before I move on, how was that? Was that good? Um, yeah, move background, man, that's a cool one. Let's have a look at a couple other ones. So let's go, um, we've got pattern one already open. Let's open up two, three, and four. You can click the first one, hold shift. I think it's on both. Uh, I want to show you another one. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I find it seven plus the option key on a Mac changes it from a plus to a minus. Can you see that? And it's option on a PC. Shrink it down, click once. Ooh. Okay, so that is kind of a good starting point. Enter the library. I'm gonna call this one other selection object. The feed up until this. Can you see this tool version? Is you can kind of undo that. Okay, I'm gonna click OK. This particular case, new features here. You'll see object aware. Converters is. I didn't check. And let's open new feature, new wish. Using that, but not object selection tool. This is pretty sweet. Click on object aware. Actually, let's do the select subject because yeah, it's yeah, select yeah. object kind of works. And you're like, mm, it's not what I want. Okay, so that's a too big a mask because it's quite detailed. But object, so, you know, the object selection tool. Watch this. I can draw a box around this guy, and look. Oh, give it a sec. <laughs> give it a second. Come on. Look at that, okay? It's done a pretty amazing yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, foot, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. okay uh, you can add to it. Let's say it's missed out a little bit of the heat yeah. there. Actually, first of all, hit the mask to see Imagine what the, if the you want hit out. You can add to it by holding the shift key down, so actually add to that back there. Pretty amazing. All right, let's turn that into a mask, and let's grab him, drag him in. I want to say toucan, but I don't think he is. Toucan? <laughs> he Bro? is going to be toucans. There you go. All right, so I've got my birds, and now I can show you the another 2021 feature called Pattern Preview. To do it, let's go to File, what? New. And over okay. here, let's type in, I want to be on pixels. So set yours to pixels if you want to follow along. I want it to be five, that 500 by 500. Let's be 72 DPI. Let's be RGB. <laughs> I don't want artboards on for this particular one. This feature, at least in my pre-release version, doesn't like artboards. Okay. Let's click Create. Download oh, let's exactly, yeah. Before I explain the tool, let's actually just drag something in. Let's grab Mr. Toucans. Okay, and get into an appropriate size. Hit Return. And I want to make this a repeating pattern because I want it for fabric or background desktop wallpaper, something. Okay, so have you done it before? I've done it where you had to chop the top of his head off and stick it down here or export to some other program to do kind of tiling. Uh, look, view, and go to Pattern Preview. Woohoo. Okay, so our little toucans, I can move them around still. Okay, and I can grab another one. Get the right sort of size. Pattern, yeah, nice. nice. Yeah. I like. Now, love. Okay. Yeah, but if you ever try to do it, you are jumping around for joy because this is super cool. If you don't do repeating wallpaper patterns, this is really nice too, yeah. I'm just kind of getting our friends in here willy nilly. Who else is missing? Hummingbird. Oh, buddy, you don't fit. <laughs> A little bit of overlapping is going to be necessary. All right. All right, that'll do. Uh, so we, this is just like a view. It's not actually doing anything. It hasn't made like a pattern for us. We still need to do that. It's just kind of like a way of viewing it. So with it off, you can't see the overlap. So to make our pattern, we definitely need it on pattern preview. So you can see the toucan kind of poking out the top. And then we go to our patterns panel. Okay, if you don't have that, go to a window and open up patterns. And what you want to do is, I'm going to turn my background color off. So it's white. I'm going to just bin it. Okay, and what I want to do is do nothing. Just click on this little plus. Give it a name. Mine's birds. Oddly named birds. You can see there, a repeating pattern swatch. Oh. Now you can go out to something like, I don't know, Spoonflower or whatever you can, like I've got wallpaper printed as repeating patterns. I've got wrapping paper patterns uh, onto fabric. Okay, made cushions, that sort of thing. And um, we can do it for some mock-ups here. So let's go to file open. Let's go mock-up, we'll open up mock-up one and two, if I can find it. There he is, mock-up one and two. Uh, these won't be in your exercise files because I don't have rights to give you these ones. Okay, but you can find a lot of Photoshop templates. You're looking for the word Photoshop templates. These are both from, hmm, I can't remember. I think they're from Envato Elements or Photoshop Adobe Stock. But what ends up happening if you find Photoshop kind of templates or mock-ups is, let's look at this first one, is that some a designer's gone through and mocked this up for you and all you need to do is adjust the smart object. Okay, so to edit a smart object, it's this little icon there. Okay, double click it. It opens up in this new tab up here and I want to get rid of all of this. So I'm just going to go select all and I'm going to go edit. I want it to have a white background. Um, I'm going to go to edit fill even. Can't do it on the background. Okay, so, oh, have your layer selected, Dan? There you go, edit, then go to fill. I'm going to fill it with the foreground color. No, just going to fill it with white. Okay, so, and then I want to apply my pattern to it. Okay, so I've deselected. I'm just going to click once. Look at that. What am I like repeating pattern? Is it save? And then jump back to mock up one. Give it a second. It'll update. It takes a little second. Come on. Look at that. It's already bent around the sheets and oh, it's all being faded in nicely. And some of the benefits of using those templates and I found a practical use for a repeating pattern. So look at another one. Okay, this the same with this one. Somebody's gone through and kind of added the graphics and kind of blended them nicely already. All we need to do is update the smart objects. Let's do this part of the hoodie here. Okay, so everyone does it a little bit differently. Okay, so I'm gonna double click it. Yeah, added like a safe zone. So you can kind of see where it all goes. I'm just gonna create, I'm just gonna go over the top of that layer again with edit fill because I want it to be white background. Okay, grab on that and hit save and watch my design, hopefully. Update, look, birds. Let's do one more. Double click him, sleeve. I'm gonna fill it again with white. Add the birds. And what you can do is you can scale them. Okay, can you see down here, it's a kind of an effect that's applied to it. So you can double click on the little icon here and say actually on the angle would be different. So you can move them around. And I want to change the scale around so they're not so big. Okay, you click okay. Save, watch my mock-up number two. Oh, he's already updated, look at that. So there are lots of mock-ups around and templates around for things like stationery and websites and I don't know, UI mock-ups for phones. They're pretty handy. The one thing that I did when I was messing around with this is when I did my like graphic is when I was trying to make my patterns, I turned off uh, pattern preview and then made it and it doesn't, watch this if I add it, it doesn't make it the same way. It's not repeating. 
Okay, so that needs to be on. When you're finished, you can turn it off. Right, let's look at the next feature. Let's go to file look. This feature is one of those uh, useful, but not very exciting. It's not gonna give me my hair back. <laughs> or maybe lose it less. Okay, so over here, look at that. There's a triangle tool. And you're like, there's always been a triangle tool, Dan. <laughs> Uh, nope, uh, it's Guys, new it's and exciting. Okay, it's new. But have you ever tried to go and you're like, what well, is a triangle tool? You grab a pencil and you draw a kind of a rough shaped triangle and it's not quite it's uh, symmetrical. Like you know, it. Look at that, triangle tool. Uh, fill in a stroke. Mm, I was going to leave it as is. Like, you get a triangle. Hold shift. Get like a constraint equal size triangle. It's not exciting, but things like arrowheads and triangles, it is if you are into it. Uh, one thing you notice as well is that's new. Okay, you're like, ooh, that, what's that do? If you're from Illustrator, you'll be like, I know what that does. I can click it and drag it. Look at that, live edges. Or at least live shapes. Okay, so all the tools do that now. Okay, so draw a rectangle, and you now have the option to go through on the object and drag it out. If it does disappear, and you're like, mm, you've got to take a move tool, and you're like, this back. So you can either go back to the rectangle tool and make sure you have your rectangle layer selected, or you can go into this path selection tool and click on these guys. Okay, and <laughs> oh, let's switch to the direct selection tool. Make sure in your path selection tool, there's my triangle. There it is there. Okay, so we can adjust it afterwards. So that wasn't possible before. You drew it, and it was kind of mm -hmm. fixed there forever. Now all these shapes are all updatable. Another new one in there, as well as a triangle, is the polygon tool. Okay, I can oh, drag him out. At least I can drag him out now and change him. Oh, because he's a nice. You see, I'm scrolling down my problems. Add 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 as you can see, I can crank up the sides to make it other shaped sizes. Oh. There you go. Octagon. Oh. I know that one. Uh, rounded corners, how That's much star cute. happens. Oh, star base. So this is new for 2021. Hey, what are they doing in here? I don't know. I don't know. Rotating it. I want to show you. I've got to show you another thing. So let me get that in here. The triangle is in here for no reason. The reason the dots are here. Uh, but let's give it a fill of. In terms of fill. Actually, last year they built in a bunch of gradients that are actually good. If you dived into the gradients, I don't know, not in the last year, there's actually some good ones in here. Look at these. Go on. Oh. There's actually some decent ones. Yeah, I'm using. That'll do. Yeah. So what we can also do as well is we duplicate them. So we've got a couple of visionary company. I'm going to select all three of them. Another update for last year's Photoshop, and a lot of people know, is if you click on normal, okay, you can actually just hover above them and they will actually show you the preview now of like what they're going to be. Because before you have to do some secret crazy shortcuts, we'll just click one and go back to the mall. Use overlay, get us visionary. One of the new upgrades, which are kind of weird upgrades, but really useful, is the line tool. You're like, that line tool's been there. You can't copy me. What it used to be, though, is it actually used to be uh, like a small rectangle. That's how Photoshop's out with lines. Now, though, it's an actual line that can be copied and pasted out into um, something like, I don't know, Illustrator or XD. It's kind of like a proper one pixel line rather than a, it was just a skinny rectangle. And that meant something when you were, especially when you were trying to output this to kind of the drawing program. Went, ah, just a skinny rectangle. Now, it's a legitimate stroke. You have to take my word for it. <laughs> uh, another thing you can do is you can reset the live shapes. Um, Okay, these are uh, shapes. So let's look at our rectangle here. Let's say that you have moved, played around with it and you want to set it back to normal. You can reset the transforms. Watch this. If I reset it, it goes back to its original size and its original rotation. That is new. Not very exciting, but useful to know. It gets a little bit more useful when you're doing oh, something I'm like sure. mock-up. This one here. Let's grab, I don't know, library. Let's grab, let's grab our hummingbird. Let's say we want to mock this up, right? So it comes in at this size. I want to transform it down. Get it kind of, but I want it to match like the fabric. So I end up using it's been around a little while now that you can use um, warps on smart objects, which is cool. Okay, but you get in here, you're like, actually, I want to try and bend it, you know, so it matches the kind of fabric and bends around and does all cool stuff. Mm. If you haven't done this before, it's a great way to kind of try and get your artwork to I'm match your fabric. You can click and drag these, okay, and then play with these handles. Another mm, trick that a lot of people know is yeah. yeah. exact. Yeah. I can go up here and say, actually, I want to add uh, kind of an up and down horizontal line. Watch this. I can just kind of, let's say there's that fold there. I want to kind of try and bend it so that piece there looks like it's kind of, oh, grab the handle. <laughs> it's painful to watch. Nice. <laughs> For some reason, my little touchpad here is not playing ball today. Anyway, uh, let's go with this one. You know, you can start kind of matching the fabric and you can add all these extra grid points as you need them, okay, to try and warp things to make it feel like it's going around the fabric. <laughs> all right, I lose points for that one. Okay, because it's a terrible warp. <laughs> I hope you got the idea of what I was trying to do. Um, the reason I'm showing you this is because, look, you can go to properties and go to reset, and it resets the warp as well as the size, as well as the rotation. So you can undo all that stuff, or as that wasn't possible before. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. I totally like demoed that before I did my recording, and it came oh, up. <laughs> the next feature I want to show you is it's kind of one of these weird ones where it probably should be close to the beginning because it is quite special, but it's not very exciting. I want this video to be exciting to keep you watching. Um, it's more administrative, but really cool. So let's go to file. I'm going to this website. It doesn't matter which one you're going to. Let's go to file and let's go to save as. And I'm going to save mine to the cloud documents. If you 
you know, this kind of moves around a little bit. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's there. Uh, click on Save to Cloud. Now, if you've been ignoring Saving to Cloud for a long time, because you're like, oh, yeah, I'm used to working. I'm going to show you one of the perks that's why you should be doing it. I would so I'm going to call mine the website, V1. Yeah, it's 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 saved. Saved. What ends up happening is uh, it's it's saving up version of the version onto your Creative Cloud documents. Okay, so it's saving it up there. There's always a local version, so that works fast. Okay, but the actual kind of like real version is in the cloud. And there's perks for that. Because let's say that I make some changes. Come on here and go, all right, color, background. Um, uh, let's change the background gradient to... Looks good. Okay, and we change some type and we're working on it. Ready for this? Like oh, no. <laughs> because we don't know where. Right, anyway, it was a quick mock-up. Um, so let's save it and let's close it. And you're like, oh my goodness, I need to open it up again because I didn't want to didn't mean to commit those changes. Have you ever done it? And you're like, maybe if I open it up quickly, <laughs> all the history will still be there. And you're like, quick, open it up. And you know that if you go to window and go to history, after you've closed something, the history is empty. And you're like, oh, sad face. Okay, but because it's a cloud document, and you will have noticed, like my, my actual working myself, there's not much different, you know, because it loaded real quick, didn't download it every time. There's some clever stuff going on in the background. But watch this. Different from history is version history. Watch this. Look at this. It's a Cloud Docs version. Show me all the changes that I made after it was saved to the cloud. So back here, before I change the color, this version. Okay, when I change the text. Okay, how good is that? It's just like this backup. Now, what ends up happening is, can you see uh, version, I think, if you're on a, I'm on an enterprise version of the software, so I got 60 days, I think for everyone else it's 30 days. Anyway, it's long. And what ends up happening is, let's say that you're getting to this point, you're actually like, actually, I want to mark this. Okay, what it, let's let's background color change. It depends on what you're doing. It might be you've got, you know, mark, uh, mark up back from your creative director and you've wanted to save it where it is. Here, we'll delete. We'll never come. This is all because I, what? Five amazing layers. My iPad. My name is Shivansh. Uh, I'm in the software engineering program at McMaster, yeah. and I'm from. Only feature, kya bhai? Actual pixel. Actual pixel, kya bhai? Yar, I think that was it. Jo mara, matlab ki tha, jo bhi tha. خوش رہو آباد رہو اور دو ہزار اکیس مبارک ہو پہلے تو آپ نے گھبرانا نہیں ہے دو ہزار اکیس کو والا خیر کرے گا اچھا ہوگا سارے ان شاء اللہ باقی ویڈیو پسند آئی ہو تو لائک کرنا سبسکرائب کرنا کمنٹ کر کے بتانا کہ کون سا فیچر آپ کو پسند آیا اور نہیں پسند آیا تو بھی بتا دینا اور اگر اگلی ویڈیو چاہیے تو بھی تو تو لازمی بتانا اور ملتے ہیں اگلی ویڈیو میں ہر بھگوان जाना बे अबे जा बे अबे तेरे को मैंने बोला जाना बे अभी अगर दरिया लाइक करके जाई ओ हेलो हेलो